Okay, this uh, quick demo is to talk about uh, pre-multiplying. Uh, it works, uh, it, it's in relationship to the alpha channel and to trying to avoid getting some colored edges on um, images that have a, a alpha channel. Uh, uh, you know, it's something that you might see in a, in a picture like this one when, um, when, you, when you have a, a colored image with a, an alpha channel mask, but it's it may not have been um, recorded initially with the same background color as it's being used now in the composition. So to give you an example, let's let's see where we might see it really strongly. So here I'm looking at the inside uh, of a cube that I've just left available. Everything else I've removed, so all I'm seeing is a facet, a single polygon, one big polygon here. And when I zoom into that, I can see that it's got pretty good definition on the on the edges. All right. And this one is because it's been treated. Whereas if I switch to another object, this one here shows a little bit of an edge a little bit of a sort of a border color. You can see it here, for instance, this is greenish, mostly uh, almost cyan. And then it's got a little bit of a darkening edge and the darkening edge on the other side. And that's not by choice. That's um, sort of an artifact of having this uh, branch initially rendered against a dark background. And so it was uh, anti-aliased and fading towards darkness. Then it becomes totally transparent. So the color that I'm actually using now inside my 3D program is a different color <coughs> than what was originally there when I composited this picture that I'm now using as a texture image. So that's, that's something that sometimes will show as very whitish edge because you may have uh, had a white background <laughs> and it will fade to white in the background. So uh, we'll, we'll see how to get rid of that. Let's, let's see another example where this is really uh, kind of annoying and very prevalent, very strongly visible. Let's see, for instance, those red components there. Right, so here you see that these red flowers at the tips of the of the uh, the branches, those red flowers have a little bit of a darkening around them, a little bit of a darkened uh, edge, and they really are not supposed to show that. They're really supposed to be just red all the way to the edge, and then fall off into or fade into the background color without getting any darker. <coughs> same same with this green branch here; it should not turn darker before it gets to the transparent background. So, uh, where can we see what that should look like? Well, this is kind of a better way to look at it. You see the red goes much further to the edge. Uh, the green is barely showing any darkening. Uh, by comparison, again, if we look at the original, this one here, right? So perhaps we'll, to, we'll take a look at one more which had a white background and we view it against the dark background uh, inside the composition here and then we'll see what that really looks like. All right, so what we have uh, here is the original that I was working with that had uh, no pre-multiplication and shows a little bit of darkness along the edges. Not a whole lot, though. And sometimes the trick is really is just to use, um, the, to render your objects on black. And, and then uh, when you do the alpha selection, it's not as visible as when it's on white. Um, so, so for instance, you know, you might have something like this here or you might have something like this, slightly different. I, I'll talk about that a little bit. But most importantly, uh, what's quite likely going to happen is that you may have started with a white background. And that's where the the need is really there the most. Uh, but it can also happen with black or any other colored backgrounds, really. So if you have something like this scenario here, where the the particle brushes or the, the foliage brushes were used to, to draw or to paint, against the white background with the, with the alpha channel on it. Um, it. It would be, for instance, this one here, I think you can use this image as alpha. Um, it, would, it would have made um, a fairly nice looking image, but there is some white transition in the alpha channel as it's anti-aliased. So any one of these uh, thin branches will typically show a lot of whiteness around, like a white halo. Um, and we can probably do a selection here to overlay and you can tell where it's going to be white those branches are going to be 
showing a little bit of, of, of whiteness as we take that into the 3D program. So if I switch, for instance, to this one here, which is uh, on white, which was done on white background, this is what you might see. Uh, let me go and and use the the three D uh, viewing mode. You might notice that the 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 bushes or the trees or the plant or whatever it is it might be hair or any sort of three D uh, any sort of two D image with an alpha mask uh, might look okay here on the inside, right? But the moment you look on the edges of each of those tricks, you see a lot of noise. I mean, a lot of whiteness and a sort of a halo. And that's what we try to avoid. So the way to do that really is to say, well, the color that we have here on the inner part should be expanded to the outside so it also fades to and still remains on that color and not on the white color that it actually was getting to on the background. Now, if, if it were going to black, you would still see it. It would fade to darkness, to black or to a, a dark gray. And that's due to the anti-aliasing where it's blending to that color. So what we can do is we can actually work with anti, we can work with a pre-multiply feature in Dog Waffle to, to get rid of that, that effect. Uh, again, this is what it looks like if we don't pre-multiply uh, against that, or if you do use it, um, you might see something like um, with, with the pre-multiply in effect. And then the only thing you really see is the bush, the, the plants, the tree, the image that you want to see and you're not going to notice much of any sort of uh, aberrations of the colors because of whatever color was in the background during at the time when you rendered that. So if it's white or black or blue or any other color, uh, that should not affect in a significant way the uh, appearance of this uh, picture once you actually start using it inside your 3D. So how do we do this in, um, in Dog Waffle? You know, essentially the fi final result that we want is Let's look at it here. If you didn't do the pre-multiply, it would be like this, right? But that looks okay, and uh, it's a little bit dark, uh, but it, that's the problem, is that it, it's fading towards darkness here. Even these branches here are very thin and sub-pixel, and anti-aliasing does that, and it will essentially then become a little bit of a, a problem. If we pre-multiply it, it will be it will really expand the colors to the outside. But then the alpha channel is still maintaining a, a gradient transition going there. So when you look at this, this is actually a wider twig. It's a little bit bigger, and it's brighter because it maintains that color a little bit outside from where it initially starts. When you look at this one, this is a very very faint twig that's blending already a lot with the background color. What we're doing is essentially producing a modified version that looks more like this, but when you superimpose it with this as the alpha channel, it will blend away in this area, and it doesn't matter so much anymore whether the background is black or white or any other color, it will still have this color to blend to. And so the trick there, it works just perfectly. This is, this is what we have as a single function right here. Uh, if you look at the selection mask, this is right there, the pre-multiply function. Right, so this is basically how it would work. Right, you you have something like the original image like this, and the original mask. I'm going to restore it here. Um, use as alpha. So you have the image in here, and now you realize that you should probably pre-multiply that. So what you do is you simply go to the selection menu and select pre-multiply. And again, what this shows is that it will uh, improve the quality of your transparent images, meaning images with transparent content. And this is an example, you have some sort of a flare, and uh, it happens to have this annoying darkness around it, like black halo around it, that's semi-opaque, because it's fading to it. It's not a sudden transparency, it's fading to it, but it's also fading the color that it picks up as it sees it. What you really want is to, for it to be appearing like this. No matter what the background is, it's going to add this glare to it. It's not going to opaquely block it into darkness there. And what you can do is you can say what is your, what is your favorite color, what's your preferred background color, and that could be either one, the black, the white, or the primary or secondary color that we have in, in the application, or you can set the background color of your choice here. That's the one that's going to be sort of removed. But the most important thing is that it's going to look at the picture through the alpha channel and expand it. 
so that the colors, the pixel values that it finds inside that uh, alpha channel are actually going to be a little bit visible, a little bit more into the edge than they are initially. That way we can actually fade to that along the anti-aliased region and still have that color to work with rather than the background color that's really ultimately there. So all you do is you select that, uh, keep it black or whatever, uh, black is a good choice, and, and then OK that and you're done. And what you will see is that you now have, if, if you save this uh, mask, um, <coughs> if you save, um, let's see, store alpha, uh, this alpha is actually identical to the one that we have before, or very, very much the same, uh, almost identical. Where the big difference is, is really in the color. So you can you can replace this one, you can replace this one. It's not going to look a whole lot different. But the so where the real benefit is is that the colors are more pronounced, more intense. You can see that you know the original colors look like. Uh, let me let me see if we can clear the alpha so it's not blocked. The original colors look like this, right? And then when I when I undo go back to the prior one, this is the one I got from the from from using the pre-multiply. And so again, what it really does is it, it takes the colors that it sees here, right? For instance, this reddish one here. It takes that and makes it more intense and also brighter, uh, I mean, uh, bigger, wider. It, ex it, it expands it so that it now actually reaches out further. And uh, when you superimpose that with the alpha channel as a selection mask, right, you put that in there, um, perhaps without the color changing on the alpha overlay, um, it's, it's essentially going to now show you what you really want to see just through that mask, but without the side effect of the black background because we don't even get to see, we don't even get to see the black background. And so that's the function I wanted to briefly describe in Dog Waffle. You have that available under selection. Simply uh, pre-multiply to improve the quality of your images that contain a mask. Especially useful when you have things like hair or fur or a lot of very fine structures and you don't want to see the edges glow to the background color, whether it's white or black or blue or any other color. Uh, it's a very essential function that you use all the time uh, when you're integrating these images into a 3D world, be it um, animator or any any 3D, you know, if you have a, a 3D program of your choosing, you really don't want to have that glowing effect that uh, you'll see here if you didn't actually take care of that. So if you if you if you didn't take care of that, you will essentially see something like this. And in this case, it may be subtle because the background color is also pretty bright but it's not as white as the edges of those twigs. And so therefore, you will definitely see this. You'll definitely notice that and it will be annoying, especially when you zoom back down here and you'll see this all over. All right, so that's a little magic trick with pre-multiply that allows you to get a much better quality image for masking into your 3D world or even for compositing back into uh, dog waffle uh, or any other uh, 2D painting imaging application. You can composite it that way without the, uh, the glowing edges. All right, thanks for watching and I hope uh, this helped. By the way, there is uh, another couple of places where you will want to use this technique and that is of course right in dog waffle itself. Because if you have created a alpha masked image, such as of this uh, tree, and then you pick it up as a custom brush with the alpha channel, you will most likely see something like this whitish background, uh, this, this halo, this glow effect, and that's just not very cute. So what you can do instead by using the pre-multiply function is get it to that level. And so when you zoom in here, you can see that it just lacks, it doesn't have that glow anymore. This is what it looks like with the glow and this is with the glow removed. So that's, uh, you know, even if you don't take it out to a 3D program, uh, imagine if you paint it this way, you know, one click here, maybe at full opacity. Let's make sure it's, yep, it is at full opacity here. And let's keep it, you know, get two or three of those. And soon enough, you've just got way too much whiteness there. And the way you really want that is something like this. So you can also change the size, increase the, size of the brush and it still looks perfect right let me disable the preview here 
we see before, you would get something like this, a lot of whiteness all around it. And what you really want is just the tree without all that whiteness around it. Right? And uh, that's what that's all about. So again, keep this function in mind, it's very important. Tree multiple.